According to tradition, the school day is divided into six periods, each one hour long. But tradition doesn't rule at T.W. Brown Junior High School. There, the day is divided into 28 modules, called mods, and each mod is 15 minutes long. The day at Brown begins with students making out their schedules for that day, and each day's schedule is different from that of any other day of the week. First, the student fills in the mods he knows he must attend, the subject areas the school has assigned him to, like language arts, math, PE, and science. He is assigned two or three of these each day. One of them may last as little time as 30 minutes, or as long as several hours. But in addition, each student has an average of two hours per day, which have not been scheduled for him, time called independent study. He must decide how he will spend his independent study time each day, whether he will go to the library, to a large resource center, to a departmental learning center for help from a teacher, to an open lab like science or sewing, or to Sprague's swimming pool. Claudia, how do you like modular scheduling? Well, I like it a lot better than it was before because um, you have more independent study and you can learn for yourself more. And, um, well, it's not so boring as the regular six-hour you know, school day where you sit in a class for an hour, but you can move around more and you don't get so bored. So, um, really, you can learn a lot more on your own. Flexible modular scheduling at Brown is still a long way from what it looks like in any other part of the country, or from what they hope it will eventually look like in Dallas. At its optimum, modular scheduling is so individualized that a student decides for himself what he wants to study and for how long at the beginning of each day, not just how to spend his independent study time and a computer at the school schedules him the way he wants to be. If he changes his mind during the day, he is free to change his schedule. He could spend all day on one project or on many. At Brown, modular scheduling is not overwhelmingly flexible, nor have many students developed the maturity to handle their independent study time wisely. But that is to be expected. After all, the program is only a few weeks old. The use of independent study time is the one factor where we will find uh, either an acceptance of responsibility or a rejection of it. Because during independent study, which the child has about an average of two hours a day, the child will either show that he has learned uh, responsibility or that he needs uh, added help in um, this particular area. So we feel this program, in giving him an opportunity to take this responsibility, we have a teaching job to do. We know this because this is so new to the average student. But how do we ever learn anything unless we actually are given an opportunity? In theory, the independent study time is to provide students with one means of individualizing instruction. It is, it is to give students with learning problems a chance to seek remedial help from their teachers and advanced students a chance to explore in-depth areas that interest them. It is also to provide students a time to do their homework and to catch up on lectures or films missed while absent. However, students now spend their independent study time primarily the way they used to act in the old study hall. But modular scheduling is a developing process. Already students can enter into independent research contracts with their teachers for special projects. And next year, the school hopes to offer many courses on topics students say they want to learn more about, perhaps something like guitar lessons, or a discussion group on the problems of democracy, offered by teachers, students, or neighborhood people. Mr. Collier, what do you eventually want the school here to be like? I think, first of all, we should say possibly something that we do not feel like that we're ready for now, and that is a school where a child comes and does what he wants to do all day, comes when he wants to, and leaves when he wants to. This may be fine for a college-age student, maybe some high school student, but not for a junior high school age level. I envision a school, junior high or middle school, as a school in which there is enough exploratory courses, whereby that student can gain enough skills and enough knowledge that will make him knowledgeable enough wise enough to make choices of uh, 
of a vocational or industrial or academic uh, level in high school whereby he can actually set himself for life or the beginning of life. So we're, we hope to offer enough courses in junior high school or in middle school to where he can make these wise choices.